Welcome. This is my instructional video for Math C for uh, section 11.1, .1, Solving Quadratics by Square Rooting. Okay, so we've talked in the past about solving by factoring, solving using the quadratic formula. I don't remember if we've done completing the square or not. This is solving by square rooting. Really what this is saying is just what my objective written here says. Hey, solve this as a composite function. What's a composite function? That's when there, there's one variable expression. So, in other words, here's the one variable expression right here, 2x squared, because negative 16 is just a constant. So, we can analyze this and tear it apart and say, hey, how's this guy put together? Well, first thing we're doing to x is we're doing the squaring, and then we're doing the multiplying by 2, and then we're adding the negative 16. So, if this is how that's structured, then I can take it apart by doing the inverse, going backwards. So the inverse of adding negative 16 is add positive 16 to both sides. So 0 plus 16 is 16. Uh, negative 16 is 16. Make 0 and cancel. So we got 2x squared equals 16. The inverse here of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. So we divide by 2 on both sides. And we get 1x squared is equal to 16 divided by 2 is... 8. Don't know where the 2 came from. I must have been on drugs when I did that. Okay, and then the inverse of squaring, of course, is square rooting. So this is going to be x equals plus or minus their square root of 8. Now, I box that in, but that shouldn't be because that's not simplified. Because what is the square root of 8? Well, I can factor that. That's the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And then we can simplify because what is the square root of 4? Well, 4 is a perfect square, so this becomes a rational number. So this is plus or minus 1 times the square root of 4, which is really 2, times the square root of 2. There is our final answer. Plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, that was number one, or the first example, problem A, actually. And so hopefully this is like, wow, this is the same thing we used to do for lines. Like, hey, we had 3x minus 16 equals 0. We said, hey, what are we doing to x here? Well, number one, we're multiplying by 3. Number two, we're adding negative 16. So we had positive 16 to both sides. We get 3x's are equal to 0 plus 16, which is 16. We divide by 3 on both sides. And we get, hey, x is equal to 16 over 3. So back in the beginning of the year, this is why I encourage you when we're solving those linear equations to look at it as a co composite function, list the steps, what's going on. Number 1, we're multiplying by 3. Number 2, we're adding negative 16 and then solve it from there using some kind of process, right? We go backwards, so last thing on, first thing off, and we do the inverse at each step. Boom! Handy method here. Pretty cool. Okay, negative 5x squared plus 9 equals 0. So, same thing, what are we doing to x? Well, number 1, we're squaring it, and then we're multiplying by negative 5, and then we're adding the 9. That's how this expression over here is put together. This expression being this expression on the left right here. This is a description of how that's put together. So, I do the inverse going backwards. The inverse of adding 9, add negative 9 to both sides. So, that's going to cancel here. Give me negative 5x squared. 0 and negative 9 is negative 9. The inverse of multiplying by negative 5, divide by negative 5. So, Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1 times x squared is x squared. Negative 9 divided by negative 5 is 9 over 5, because a negative by negative is a positive, of course. And then the inverse of squaring is square rooting. And then, of course, the most important thing when we square root is to remember the plus or minus. So we have plus or minus the square root of 9 over 5. Well, this is the um, uh, quotient rule for exponents, because we'll take, uh, take <clears throat> taking the square root is the same as raising to the 1 half power. So basically, this is plus or minus the square root of 9 over the square root of 5. And the square root of 9, that simplifies to be plain old 3. This is plus or minus 3 divided by the square root of 5. 
Now, a lot of math geeks will tell you it's an archaic skill, means it's like outdated, it's not really important anymore, not in the age of calculators. But a lot of people still hang on to this, is that you have to rationalize the denominator. So notice our denominator here is radical 5. That's not rational, that's irrational. So we're going to convert this. That means when I do a conversion, I always multiply by 1. So in this box, is always going to be some form of the number 1 because 1 times any number is that same number. Only here I choose to write because what's going to rationalize radical 5? Well, multiplying by another radical 5. So if the denominator here is radical 5 and the whole box is 1, the numerator has to be radical 5. Then we multiply across the top because that's the rule for multiplying fractions, right? Big fraction bar, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So we have 3 times radical 5 in the numerator, and then radical 5 times radical 5 is plain old 5 in the denominator. And now you notice the denominator is rationalized. It's a rational number, the integer 5. Okay, and then I'm looking to reduce here, but 3 and 5 are prime and don't cross cancel. So that is my simplified answer. If you drop a water balloon, how does it? How long does it take to fall four feet? Okay, so the height is a function of time because of gravity is equal to 16 times t squared. Okay, and so h is the height the object falls over t seconds. So basically, how long does it take to fall four feet? So the height, h of t, is four feet, and we're going to solve for the t that gives us four feet. So we substitute four in for h of t. So, now what do we have going on now? Well, we have a composite function. What are we doing to t? Number one, we're raising it to the second power. And then number two, we're multiplying by 16. So we're going to solve it as a composite function. We're going to divide by 16 on both sides. So t squared equals 1 over 4. And then we're going to take the square root. And so the square root of t squared is t. And this is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 over 4. And the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2, so this is plus or minus 1 half. And I left the plus or minus off. Bad teacher. Bad teacher. Too much cold medicine or something when I wrote this notebook file up. There we go. So t is plus or minus 1 half. Oh, I know why I did that. Never mind. Because that's mathematically correct for the math model. But, here in fact, let me write this out. So yes, plus or minus one half. So t is equal to, oh my gosh, let's try that again. Try not to talk and write at the same time here. t is equal to positive one half or negative one half. Now, in the context of this problem, right, this is a math model here. Here's our math model. That models reality, but there's domain restrictions here because the t is zero is the instant you drop the balloon. So before zero, there's no this model doesn't apply because you're like holding the balloon still or something, so it's not falling. So this mathematical model that models falling due to gravity doesn't apply until you let it go. So the negative time is meaningless. That's why I left the plus or minus off here because the negative time is what we call an extraneous solution. So the math model gives us two solutions, but only one of those solutions applies to the actual context of the problem. Okay, the negative one has no meaning, because there's no such thing as negative time for this situation. So, there we go. T is equal to one-half second. The rooftop of a five-story building is 50 feet above the ground. So here's the ground down here. Here's the 50 feet. That's the top of the rooftop. It says, how long does it take the water balloon drop from the rooftop to pass by a third-story window at 24 feet? It's implied there. They didn't say it. It's a poorly written question. I would order 24 feet above the ground. So, we have to go 50 minus 24. That's 26. So, the question is saying, how long does it take the water balloon to drop the first 26 feet? So, we have the same function. Height as a function of time is equal to 16 times t squared. So again, we put 26 in for the height, and then we're going to solve for the time it takes to fall that 26 feet. 
So same thing, number one, what are we doing with this composite function? Well, we're squaring the t. And then number two, we're multiplying by 16. So we're going to divide by 16 on both sides. So we get t squared equals 26 over 16. Both of these are divisible by 2, so it reduces to 13 over 8. And then we're going to take the square root. So t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13 over 8. And that's plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2 times radical 2. So if we go back a couple slides here, three slides actually, notice the square root of 8 simplifies to be 2 times radical 2. So since we did that just a few minutes ago, that uh, I just simplify that here. So the square root of 8 is 2 times the square root of 2. And then here's the radical part of the denominator is radical 2. So we're going to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply by 1. And what would rationalize radical 2? Well, multiplying by another radical 2. So I do that in the numerator as well. And so we get 2 times 13 is 26. So this is going to be the square root of 26. And then radical 2 times radical 2 is plain old 2. So we have plain old 2 times another plain old 2. That's plain old 4. Boom. And there is our reduced answer. Now, again, I box this in, not thinking clearly, because what's this say? Well, t is plus or minus the square root of 26 over 4. By, this, by the way, the square root of 26 is like a little more than 5, because the square root of 25 is exactly 5. So this is like basically five, a little more than 5 over 4. So this is plus or minus a little more than 1. Well, the negative time doesn't make any sense for this problem again. It's extraneous. So actually, my answer is t is equal to positive the square root of 26 over 4. There is the one exact solution that answers the question, how, do, how long does it take the balloon to drop from the rooftop to reach the third story window that's 24 feet above the ground. Bam! There's the answer. On the moon, the distance in feet that an object falls in t seconds is modeled by the function uh, d of t is equal to 8 thirds t squared. Okay, so instead of 16 t squared, it's different. Well, that's because the gravity on the moon is approximately one-sixth that of Earth. Okay. So what's 16 times 1, 6? So 16 divided by 6. So that would reduce. That's going to be 8 times 2. That's going to be 3 times 2. So the 2s will cross cancel. So they got 8 thirds. That actually makes sense. This sounds realistic. Woohoo. Suppose an astronaut on the moon drops a tool. How long does it take the tool to fall 4 feet? So again, the distance it falls, that's 4 feet. We're going to plug that in for D, and we're going to solve for the T that makes that true. So 4 equals 8 thirds T squared. So again, what are we doing to T? Because this is a composite function. There's only one variable expression here, the, the 8 thirds T squared. So number 1, we're taking T and we're scoring it. And then number 2, we're multiplying that by the fraction 8 over 3. So inverse divide by 8 over 3. Now, that's the same as multiplying by 3 over 8. So here the 8's are going to cancel, the 3's are going to cancel, that's going to leave me t squared, boom boom, and then we have 4 times 3 divided by 8, so 4 times 3 over 8, and 4 times 3 is 3 times 4, and then uh, 8 is 2 times 4, so the 4's cross cancel, that gives us 3 halves. So t squared equals 3 over 2. And then we're inverse of squaring is square rooting. So t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2, which is plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. Again, we want to rationalize the denominator. So we multiply by 1 in a form that, hey, what rationalizes radical 2? Well, squaring it. That means multiplying it by another radical 2, which means I multiply by the same number on the top in the numerator, that is. So these guys will simplify to make plain old 2. Boom. And radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6. So t equals plus or minus the square root of 6. And this, again, is there's no, um, there's no meaning to having a negative time. So we're going to cross that off as an extraneous solution. So we're going to say t is equal to positive 
the square root of 6 divided by 2. Now, the square root of 4 is exactly 2. The square root of 9 is exactly 3. This is probably in the neighborhood of like 2.5. So basically, this is 2.5 divided by 2, which is like in the neighborhood of 1 and a quarter. I don't know how close that is, but it's in a neighborhood. Okay, so there we go. T equals the square root of 6 over 2. And I believe that's our last problem on this instructional video. It is. Okay, well, I hope you got something out of that. I'm thinking solving a quadratic that's in a form that as a composite function is actually, that's like really easy. That's probably the easiest way to do, except for maybe factoring. Maybe factoring is easy, maybe easier, maybe not. But uh, they're close. This is certainly a desirable way to solve a quadratic when it's allowed. Now, when you have a normal quadratic like, uh, hey, x squared plus 2x plus 7 equals 0, Notice here, you can't use the composite function method. Why? Because it's not a composite function because there's two different variable expressions. See, you can only do this when there is no x term. So then, this now, x squared plus 7, that's a composite function. So, these are special. We can't do this all the time. So, the trick is to recognize when it occurs and then use this method because it's short and easy. So... That's the big picture. Other than that, I'll leave you to the rest of your day. Ciao.